Joyce Meyer Ministries dankt haar donateurs die deze uitzending mogelijk maakten. Well, prayer is not an obligation, it's a privilege. My goodness, what, what kind of an amazing thing is it for the God who created everything, who has all power, who's everywhere all the time and knows everything, to say, you can come to me boldly <laughs> and ask me for whatever you want or need, and I will listen and meet your need. Hey, the really good news is, is you don't even have to be perfect to do that. Because when we pray in Jesus' name, boy, there's such power in that name. When we pray in Jesus' name, we're presenting to God all that Jesus is, not what we are. I don't go pray in my own name, and I hope you don't either. We pray in his name. Prayer, I think, many times... Um, can become a burden to people, and the enemy can easily get us convinced that we're never doing it right. <laughs> you ever kind of sense or feel that even though you're committed to prayer, you'll pray, but when you're done, you wonder if you did it right, or you wonder if you prayed about the things that you should have prayed about, or did you pray long enough, or did you say the right things? And suffering with some of that myself, I've learned over the years that prayer can just be super simple and satisfy God. They don't have to be long, they don't have to be eloquent, they just need to be honest, and they need to be sincere. You can pray anywhere, anytime. As I already said yesterday morning, the first reason why prayers don't get answered is people don't ask. <laughs> you have not because you ask not. I wonder how many things right now you're maybe struggling with or worried about that you haven't yet even bothered to ask God to help you with. Or how many things we think that God just wouldn't be interested in or wouldn't have time for? We don't just take the big stuff to God. We take everything to God. And you know, to be honest, when God touched my life back in the 70s, and I say I entered into a more serious relationship with God, one of the things that was so refreshing to me was to learn that God was interested in every area of my life. And this is just a real simple example, but God touched me on a Friday and filled me with his spirit. I was in my car, and all I can say is I felt like somebody just filled me full of liquid love. I mean, I even loved weeds. I thought weeds were pretty. <laughs> I was like drunk on the love of God for... Well, I'd like to say that lasted forever, but it was kind of the honeymoon stage, and then it was time to grow up. And uh, I bowled on Friday nights in a league, and I went bowling that night, and I wasn't doing very well. And I wasn't really accustomed to hearing the voice of God, and sometimes even if we think we are, we're afraid to believe it. And... Um, I distinctly heard the Spirit speak in my heart, why don't you ask me to help you bowl? And boy, my religious brain immediately just rejected that. Well, I can't ask God to help me bowl. <laughs> but I went ahead and did it anyway and had a pretty good night. And you know, it's kind of been a long journey, but that was, that, that's part of what makes our walk with God so exciting is that he wants to be involved in every area of your life. This is what it means to have intimate, personal relationship with God through Christ. Now, we couldn't come to him in that fashion on our own, but through Christ, we can come to him and believe that the door is always open. Let me tell you something. When you call God, you never get a busy signal. Isn't that good? Amen? He never sleeps, he's always home. So the first thing you need to do is ask God, and I would imagine that some of you, even if you didn't hear anything but that today, that would be worth it, because I think you're probably struggling with a lot of things you wouldn't have to struggle with if you would simply just ask God to help you. 
The second thing that can really hinder prayer is holding a grudge against somebody. We can't talk about that anymore, but there it is. Don't go to bed mad, don't get up mad. <laughs> the third thing we talked about was hidden sin. Now to be honest, sin is not a problem if we don't try to hide it. It actually really is not a problem if we don't try to hide it. And really when we talk to God about our sins, when we acknowledge his conviction or when we confess our sins to God, we're not doing it for his sake because he already knows everything that we've done. So we're not like, oh, and by the way, God, I was bad yesterday. Uh, yeah, I know that. But see, confession to me is like it's a way to go down and get it and bring it up and get rid of it. And it's amazing what happens when you just deal with stuff. Like I said yesterday, it's only the things that are hidden in darkness that have power over us. Now the first thing I want to talk about today is doubt and how doubt affects us in getting answer to prayer. James 1, 5 through 8. James chapter 1, verse 5 through 8. If any of you is deficient in wisdom, which I think is probably most of us, let him ask of the giving God who gives to everyone, that includes you, <laughs> liberally, that means way more than enough, and ungrudgingly, he doesn't resent helping us, he likes to do it, without reproach and fault finding. Well, I could sit and just look at this scripture for a long time. So when I come to God, even though maybe some of the messes in my life are of my own making, they came through my own lack of wisdom. I got myself in trouble. I didn't listen to God to start with. I didn't follow peace. I can still, even in the midst of that, I can go to God and ask him to help me, and he won't even reproach me, which means shame or blame, and he doesn't find fault with me. He just helps me. Now, that doesn't mean he doesn't teach me and train me and correct me, but one of the examples that I've used many times is if you have a child that has not done all their chores this week, but they're outside playing and the neighborhood bully gets after them, and you hear them screaming for help, you're not going to go check their list of chores to see if they got all their check marks. Otherwise, just too bad for them. I mean, you, it, if the door's not open, you may go through it to get outside to help your kid. Are you hearing me? Amen? And that doesn't mean that you won't correct them later about their chores. That doesn't mean that you might not even, you know, tell them they can't go outside for a day or something. But you will not refuse to help your children because they are not perfect and don't do everything exactly the way you want them to. So stop letting the devil steal from you by thinking that you dare not ask God to help you because you have not done everything that you should do. Just own it. Amen? Amen? Only it must be in faith that he asks with no wavering, no hesitating, no doubting. For the one who wavers, hesitates, and doubts is like the billowing surge out at sea that is blown hither and thither and tossed by the wind. For truly let not such a person imagine that he will receive anything he asks for from the Lord. For being as he is a man of two minds, hesitating, dubious, irresolute, he is unstable and unreliable and uncertain about everything he thinks, feels, and decides. Now, doubt leaves us midway between believing and not believing. And this says we're not to become people of two minds. And so the Bible talks about the mind of the spirit and the mind of the flesh. And I think we have to learn how to live by the mind of the spirit, and that's really like what you sense down in here. So there are times when I can believe something with my heart, but the enemy is going to use my mind 
to try to steal my faith. Now, are you with me? So I am not gonna stand here and tell you that I have some nifty message that I can give you a little three-point sermon on how you can never have doubt again. <laughs> because to be honest with you, doubt comes to all of us. And I've thought about this quite a bit. Because I just really don't like to give people answers that I don't think will work. And so I've thought about this because there's times when, when I have doubt. Sometimes when I'm up here preaching and maybe, you know, I'm not getting the right reaction I think I should, I'll hear the enemy say, this is not the right message. And while I'm preaching to you, I have to tell him to shut up. <laughs> and I have to go back to my own heart of, yes, this is right. I prayed about this. I sought God about this. And I'm not going to stand up here and be double-minded. <laughs> it is important that we believe all the way through to the manifestation. And I can pretty much promise you that doubt is going to come against your mind, but that's when you need to go back to the mind of the Spirit. <laughs> and very often go back to Scripture. What does the Word say? You see, it doesn't matter how I feel. It doesn't matter what I think. It doesn't matter what people say. It doesn't really matter even what my circumstances are. The only thing that really matters is what does the Word say. <laughs> this is what it means to walk by the Word. So what I want to strongly recommend <laughs> is when you're standing in faith for something or you've asked God for something and it's just not happening, I mean, let's just say you're believing God for one of your children's salvation. And the more you pray, the worse they act. Well, you know, that's not really uncommon because what happens when you pray, and this may be something you've never thought of, when we pray for somebody else, God begins to deal with them. And I don't know about you, but I don't always act real pretty when God's dealing with me. <laughs> and so it is very possible that when you start praying for somebody, they can act worse than they did. <laughs> and then what the devil wants you to think is, well, that sure isn't working. But what you need to say, and I'm saying say because we need to use our mouth for right stuff. In a time like that, what you need to say, you can just take your doubts and head back to hell where you came from because because it is God's will that all should be saved. I have prayed and I believe that God is working in my behalf right now. And not only will that help the answer come through, but here's a really good benefit you stay happy and excited in the meantime. Everybody's exciting, excited when they're expecting a breakthrough at any moment. That's what it means to live with hope. A positive expectation that something good is about to happen any moment. Instead of waking up and saying, oh, I dread today, I dread today. We need to wake up and think, I can't hardly wait to see what God does today. Amen. Mark 11, 23 and 24 says, Truly I tell you, whoever says to this mountain, be lifted up and thrown into the sea and does not doubt at all in his heart. Doesn't even really say that doubt won't come to your mind, but does not doubt at all in his heart, but believes that what he says will take place, it will be done for him. For this reason, I'm telling you, whatever you ask for in prayer, believe, trust, and be confident that it is granted to you and you will get it. <laughs> now, we talked about this last night. I need to believe I've got it before I see it. <laughs> Did you hear me? We need to believe we've got it before we see it. And boy, is that hard for people who are not accustomed to living like this. Well, how can you believe what you don't see? Well, because we have two lives. We've got a spiritual life and we've got a natural fleshly life. 
and the spiritual part of us cannot be seen, it operates in an unseen realm where there are unseen yet wonderful, amazing things happening. And when God suddenly does something in your life, that doesn't mean that that was when he started working on it. God is already working in your behalf. You know, it's like little kids play their pretend games. <laughs> Have their little invisible friends. Well, you know what? We've got an invisible friend too. I love it, don't you? And I talk to my invisible friend. <laughs> okay, now this is such a cool scripture. 2 Corinthians 4.13 Yet we have the same spirit of faith as he had who wrote, I have believed and therefore have I spoken. We too believe and therefore we speak. So what I'm saying is when doubt comes, open up your mouth and confess what you're believing, not the lie the devil is telling you. Just because a crook knocks on your door, that doesn't mean you have to let him in. Amen? And then here's another facet to doubt. If we know very much about God at all, to be honest, we rarely ever doubt that God can do something. But we doubt that he will do it for us. It's easier sometimes to tell somebody else what God's going to do for them and believe it for them than it is to believe it for ourselves. And that's because we look at all of our mistakes. And I'm not saying that we live sloppy lives and don't care about how we live and that, you know, God just brushes over everything. I'm not saying that at all. God is merciful, but I'm talking about somebody whose heart is right toward God. And, and you know, I make mistakes. Matter of fact, I doubt that there's a day that goes by that I don't make mistakes. But I'll tell you the truth, and I'm sorry if this upsets you, but I am not focused on what's wrong with me. You know why? Because I wasted too many years of my life focused on what was wrong with me and just taking an inventory of every little thing that was wrong with me, and I gave that up. Because whatever I am, I am in Christ, and whatever I'm not, I'm still in Christ. And if I do anything good, it's because he enabled me. And if I do anything bad, then he's the only one that can forgive me. And I want God's conviction. I want to know when I'm doing wrong things. I, I mean, I thank God when he shows me. Now, Joyce, you had a bad attitude in that situation. Oh, thank you, God. I do. I thank him. Because I lived in darkness and ignorance for too many years, going around mistreating people and not even knowing I was doing it. But see, the only way you can thank God for showing you what's wrong with you is if you're not condemned by it. I said the only way you can thank God for showing you what's wrong with you is if you're not condemned by it. And the Bible says, he that knew no sin became sin that we might be made the righteousness of God in Christ. Where sin abounds, grace does much more abound. In him we are justified, made right with him, sanctified, redeemed, set free. Imperfection has nothing to do with God's ability and willingness to answer our prayers. Now, you know, if somebody is got hidden sin in their life and they're living wrong and they're not paying attention to anything that God's saying, then it's certainly within God's realm of choice to withhold an answer until he can get your attention and get you to come to a place of repentance is no different than the way we handle our children. 
I'll give you my word first, but if you don't do what I told you to, eventually I will have to touch your circumstances. <laughs> Amen? I mean, that's about as plain as I know how to make it. So, wonderful scripture in Hebrews 4, 15 and 16. Got to read this. Can't, can't not read this. <laughs> For we do not have a high priest who is unable to understand and sympathize and have a shared feeling with our weaknesses and infirmities and the liabilities to the assaults of temptation. But we have one who has been tempted in every respect, just like we have, yet without sinning. Jesus knows what it's like to be in a human body and to have doubt come and temptation come and impatience come. He, he understands all that. He made it through all of it without sinning, and he did it for us, and now we get the reward that he deserved. So then let us fearlessly and confidently and boldly draw near to the throne of grace, the throne of God's unmerited favor to us sinners, that we may receive mercy for our failures and find grace to help in good time for every need, appropriate help and well-timed help coming just when we need it. So don't ever draw back from asking God to help you. You know, to me, when I, and, and this is the way I start a lot of mornings. Father, I come to you today in Jesus' name, admitting to you that I don't deserve anything good. I don't deserve your help. I don't deserve anything. But I come in his name presenting to you all that he is, not what I am. My faith is in Jesus. And because of that, I can come boldly to your throne. and get my needs met. Well, I want to personally encourage you to learn everything that you can about prayer. Nothing will transform your life more than simply talking to God about anything and everything. And in case you're wondering, yes, He does care about not only you, but everything that's going on in your life. There's nothing you can't talk to God about. person want to leave the comfort and monotony of home to come someplace crazy like this and do a medical clinic? Well, let's ask the volunteer doctors and nurses who do it all the time. They look sad and get downhearted and then they look at you get make eye contact and you smile and they read that smile and then they start smiling and then the kids all run to you and they smile. When you really experience that, you just, you would, you're hooked. So what do you think? It can't hurt to at least check it out, right? All you need to do is go to our website, JoyceMeyer.org. All the information is there for you. And just think, your adventure may begin today. You know, the Word of God teaches us that if we are willing to share what we have, God can multiply that and make it into a lot more than what we started with. So please share. Help ons om andere mensen te kunnen helpen. Bel ons 026 20 22 100 of ga naar joyce-meijer.nl slash partner. Elk gebed en elke donatie telt. Samen veranderen we de wereld. It's very painful and difficult to go through life with a wounded soul. I know because for years I lived that way due to being sexually abused by my father when I was a young child. But I learned that God could heal even my deepest hurts if I would just open my heart up and let him in. 
And in my new book called Healing the Soul of a Woman, you too can discover how to allow God into those wounded places in your life. God has a brand new beginning for you and you do not have to spend the rest of your life hurting. Bestel nu innerlijke genezing van de vrouw via onze website joyce-meyer.nl of bel 026 20 22 100. Bestel ook het werkboek bij het boek. Joyce koppelt gerelateerde bijbelteksten en de diepgaande vragen aan de specifieke hoofdstukken die je kunnen helpen de innerlijke genezing te ontvangen waarna je verlangt. Een dag begint pas goed met een goed ontbijt. En een dagelijkse overdenking van Joyce. Nieuwe impulsen en bemoedigende gedachten die je zullen sterken tijdens je dag. Abonneer je gratis op de overdenkingen op joyce-meyer.nl slash overdenking of op Facebook. Begin je dag goed. Het is het waard.